that one person will go to one place for all their supply chain needs. If you don't create an obligation for that one place to be you, you risk being excluded altogether. The case question we have been asked today is how do you target your offering and expand in order to increase the percentage of shipments to 20% in five years? To answer this question, we've looked at both your current and our proposed strategy. Currently, your revenue is driven by two things. One, your product offering, and two, your customer base. Your product offering is represented by the graph at the top here. Through working with banks and logistics providers, you're able to provide a product that provides a financial supply chain and a physical supply chain. Your customer base is represented by the graph at the bottom. Currently, you are focused on a low geographical footprint and a low number of users of your platform, especially relative to your competitors. Through our strategy from A to B, we propose you make two changes. First, with respect to product offering, we propose you introduce Target, which sees you working with insurance companies to expand your product offering to a new link between buyers and sellers. For the second strategy arm, Expand, we propose that you focus on increasing the number of users on your database and oh, rather on your platform and your geographical footprint. Following this strategy will allow you to increase your number of customers, which in turn allows you to increase the number of transactions on your platform, which ultimately leads to an increase in the percentage of your shipments relative to the overall market. Let's take a step back and consider the analysis that has driven this proposal. Today we have identified two key issues facing your business, and the first one of these is competition creating choice. The typical customer acquisition model follows, the, uh, follows this process. A customer who knows about your business is then educated as to the kind of software that you provide. However, they then have a preference about which software as a service they wish to use. And then finally, the acquisition portion. The key to where this falls short in your terms is the preference section. As you are not the preferred supplier for software as a service in supply chain management, there is a distinct gap in this customer acquisition model. The real key impact to this issue is that if you wish to use the network effect that your business model so much depends on, you have to change this preference into an obligation to choose your software over everyone else's. The second key issue we see here are your growth drivers. Currently your growth is driven by the ability to link two ends of a supply chain from the customer that wants their goods moved to the person that can move their goods. This, this supply chain linkage is enhanced through two things. One, the number of users that use your platform and two, your geographical footprint, which provides opportunities for goods to be moved to different places. As we discussed in current and proposed, these two things are places in which you fall short relative to your competitors. Therefore, you must focus on expanding your customer base and expanding your geographical footprint if you wish to grow. To further understand this concept, we have undertaken a customer analysis. In doing so, we have identified two customers. One, the transporter, or the person that moves your goods, and secondly, the transportee, or the person that wants your goods moved. These are both your customers because they are interdependent. You need both of them to drive transactions on your platform. With respect to the transporter, currently you're focused on working with shipping companies. We propose that there is an opportunity here to start working also with trucking companies. Trucking companies provide you with an extra link from port to ultimate retailer, and they also provide you with the ability to be exposed to new shipping companies that you can work with. With respect to transportee, currently you're focused on big business and SMEs. We propose you increase your focus on SMEs because they are the high transaction volume customer. What SMEs want is the ability for you to hold their hand through the entire supply chain management process and the ability for you to give them analytics which would be too costly for them to otherwise have. Off the back of these two issues, 
we suggest you implement our strategy from A to B. And this has two arms. Firstly, target, and secondly, expand. The first arm of this strategy is target, and this seeks to fill the missing gap in your product offering, which is the insurance provider. And this has three key steps. Firstly, catering the information that you provide to the information that an insurance provider would want from you. Secondly, partnering with three key global insurers. And finally, utilizing an interdependence network. This arm of the strategy is key to meet the objective of the case question of how you target your offering in order to ensure you become a one-stop shop for supply chain management. And this, uh, you should implement this arm of the strategy for three key reasons. Firstly, in catering to, uh, your information to insurance providers, you are really able to fill the gap in that supply chain management and become a one-stop shop. And this meets the objective of targeting your offering. Secondly, through partnering with three key global insurers, you are able to reach the widest amount of clients. Um, and this serves to increase the percentage of, you, uh, of shipments to 20% in five years. Finally, and quite crucially to this arm, is the uh, utilization of the network that is developed through partnering with another arm of the supply chain management system. Insurers who use your platform will then be able to create an obligation in their customers to use your platform as well. And this creates a network effect. This is a similar effect that you experienced when you partnered with the finance arm of your supply chain management system. And this also meets the objective of a targeted offering. The second strategy arm is expand, which focuses on creating a value add and supply chain linkage through the customer base and through the geographical footprint. We propose you do two things. First, we propose that you create an SME instant communication service and an SME monthly analytics report on which they can see where your products have been shipping and why they've been shipping there and whether they should ship there as well. Secondly, we propose that you begin working with trucks or with truck providers and you begin partnering with them in the United States. Following this strategy will allow you to increase the percentage of your shipments relative to the overall market for three key reasons. First, by providing instant communication and monthly analytics reports, you are providing the two things that, as I discussed in customer analysis, the SME really wants. By providing the SME with what they want, you are able to acquire them and expand your customer base. Secondly, Acquiring more SMEs allows you to increase the percentage of your shipments because SMEs are the high transaction volume customer. Thirdly, by working with trucks, you are able to gain two benefits. One, you are able to be exposed to their networks um, through with shipping companies and also with local providers. And secondly, you are able to increase the value proposition of your current supply chain model um, by adding the port to final retail. Ultimately, the case question you asked us today set three key objectives. How do you target your offering? How do you expand? And how do you reach this increase in shipment percentage? Through the implementation of our strategy, Target, you are able to target your offering to insurance companies to fulfill your portfolio that you offer your clients, as well as make use of the network effect of your business model. Through the arm expand, you are able to expand your customer basis, and this happens through increasing the quantity and geographical location, which serves to meet the increase in shipping percentage. We now pass you on to Nathan and Kanda to deal with finance and implementation of the strategy. First, um, our strategy overall looks to firstly target a, a, a link in the supply in the chain which will obligate users to use GT Nexus. The second arm of expand looks to really fulfill the whole supply chain and its use of GT Nexus on the whole. Kanda will take you through how this strategy is implemented and I'll finalise with how we finance this and how it results in an increase from 5% 20% of shipments made using our service. Our first strategy of target has a couple of key criteria which 
drive it. Firstly, we look to, to businesses which have a need for the information we provide. And secondly, we look to those links which really make a difference and have an ability to obligate shippers to use GT Nexus in their system. Our first strategy, Target, proposes that rather than trying to become the preferred company, you need to become the company that businesses are obliged to go with. The reason for this is firstly, the market you operate in is dra drastically filled with competitors. Secondly, the cloud system is extremely homogenous, and so it means that although you can, it is difficult to gain customers through differentiation. The way we, we, we propose that you become the company people are obliged to go with is by partnering with insurance companies. The reason this is going to work is that by partnering by three key insurance companies by China, Europe, and Asia, by doing this, you can gain the millions of clients that insurance companies have and start driving revenue from them. And on top of this, these insurance companies can gain clients from you and they can gain key insights about where products are going, what's in the shipments, and what the risk profile is, is for these clients, which is information that is very important for these insurance companies. In order to do this, the first thing you need to do is determine which companies you're going to partner with. We believe you need to first find large international companies and also companies that have a large profile of clients who will be um, wanting to go with your product. This model is expandable over the next three, four, five, six years so that you can develop an ecosystem between you and insurance companies so that you can mutually grow together and become the company that every business has to go with in the future. In terms of the timeline for implementing this, we propose you do this over a space of two years. The first thing you need to do is determine which insurance company you're going to partner with. The second thing you can do is take your current clients and put them into your different insurance companies on two key criteria. Firstly, what are your clients' risk profiles and which insurance company they should go with? And secondly, what is the geographical location? After you complete this stage, you can then take the clients of the insurance companies and integrate them into your system. And then once you finish this complete integration, you can start offering the insurance service to all new clients. Once you complete this, you can continue to grow and expand and develop your customer base to become the market leader over the next three years. So how we develop this as an offering to insurance companies is that we provide our service free to them. What this does is that it gives them value in their business and maximizes the efficiency of their operations by getting the information GT Nexus provides. We then increase the, the percentage of all shipments made by having them obligate their clients to use us. This then flows through to an increase percentage of shipments for us and an increase in revenues. Our second strategy, expand, proposes two things. Firstly, you need to increase the value proposition that you offer to your clients and secondly, you need to diversify your geographical presence. In order to increase your value offering, we propose two things. Firstly, you create a monthly SME report and secondly, you develop a personalized 24-7 hotline. In order to develop your geographical presence, we propose you develop a system of American trucks. In terms of the SME report, currently how you operate is you take a client and you optimize their supply chain. However, what you have not realized is that you have key and vast amounts of knowledge and data that you can analyze and create key insights from for your clients. For example, by knowing which products are going where, at what time they're going, and how, what, what quantities they're going, you can understand the demand for the different products and the demand in different areas and provide these insights to your clients to create an extremely unique value offering. The second part of this is to create a personalized hotline as Alex talked about. What we have seen is that there is a key difference between SMEs and large distributors. SMEs have large fluctuations in what they require and for this reason we believe you need to increase the engagement you have with these SMEs and you should do this through developing a personal hotline. In terms of the second part of our strategy, the American trucks, the current way that you operate 
is you take goods from one country, say China, and you ship them over to another country, America. And this is where your process ends. However, we, what we propose is you extend the supply chain even further. And you do this by partnering with a large distribution company, for example, Maersk, who has a large number of trucks. By doing this, you do two things. Firstly, you can develop your customer base into being much further out by having a much more personalized and optimized system. And secondly, you can develop your customer base as you now have a much higher value offering. In terms of implementing the strategy, we propose you do this over a space of five years. The first thing you need to do is you need to understand which company you're going to partner with for these American trucks, which we proposed as being Maersk. The second thing you need to do is you need to develop a cloud-based system which takes into account the GPS tracking for these different trucks and offer this as key insights to your clients so they can really know where their products are going and can believe that it's going to reach their destination. The second thing you can do is develop these SME reports by first data mining all the current data you have to create your first SME report and then developing a team who can continually analyze market demands. After you do this, you can create the 24-7 hotline. In terms of the structure of this offering, we propose that you give the hotline to every single customer as soon as they come on board. However, we propose that you should develop trust and loyalty with your clients for a whole year before you start offering them the SME report. Once you do this, over the next 10 to 15 years, you can take our model of American trucks and implement them in places like Europe and Asia where they can be used and expand your geographic presence even further. The cost of implementing this strategy is firstly in developing the analytics platform, a cost of approximately $1 million up front. The truck and GPS tracking services through the cloud will be more expensive at $5 million, but what we see is this incremental increase in expenditure is going to drive a much bigger percentage of shipments going into the future. What we see is that we change the shipment mix, and firstly we look at what we have currently, where a large percentage of the ships are filled up, but these are made by a low transaction volume. And moving to SMEs, we increase the amount of transactions made as we target smaller amounts of shipments, but we still fill that ship, meaning we create a solidified revenue presence into the future as these small to medium enterprises grow and we've offered them something in their growth. And secondly, we create a higher margin product. Also important is that we've created a competitive advantage for these and that they've accessed cheaper shipping for them. So how do we shift the percentage of shipments from 5% to 20% in the next five years? We do this through two through the two arms of our strategies, with 75% of this gain coming up from our first strategy of target and an obligation by insurers for shippers to use our service. The second arm has 25% gain, and this results in a 20% of shipments made being used by GT Nexus. I'd now like to hand you back to Alex and Brittany, who will take you through the conclusion. So today we've come to you with a vision to increase the percentage of all your shipments relative to the overall market by 20%. And we've told you how to do this through two key words, target and expand. With respect to the target, we've proposed that you move now towards working with insurers to increase your value offering and to acquire your customers and to get them on board with the information that you can provide them. With respect to expand, we propose that you now begin working with not only truck companies, but also that you now begin trying to acquire more SMEs, therefore creating more supply chain linkage through an increase in customer base and increase in geographical footprint. Thank you, and we now open the floor to questions. Thank you. Um, Tim, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Uh, my question uh, would be, um, you mentioned that um, the, the strategy to target uh, is to uh, partner with uh, global insurance companies. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's a really good idea. But I would like to hear a bit more about um, your thoughts on what are the potential hurdles, um, risks, and challenges that you will face 
uh, when partnering with global insurance companies, and how do you plan to address these uh, risks and challenges? So I suppose on that basis, um, when you target an insurance company, the key risk in their mind will be the risk of your own business because of course an insurance company doesn't want to take on themselves any unnecessary risk in using a new software as a service supply chain management system. But I suppose from our end of that spectrum, it's key to mitigate that risk that you show just the value that we can offer them in terms of information that an insurance company would be looking to, like whether or not, ins uh, whether or not shipments actually made it on time, if there's someone trying to claim insurance from a lost shipment, if that shipment actually did go missing, um, and information like that, that all proves to an insurance company that we mean business and we can actually help them in terms of assess whether or not um, they need to reinsure or any indication of when they would be seeking a, a premium or um, those kind of indications. Another risk to add on top of that is what if your data fails? What if on your side something goes wrong, the information you've provided them is also wrong, you lose their trust in that way? To respond to that, Part of the reason why we propose you begin working with trucks is so you add another layer of supply chain visibility. The more visibility you have, the more accurate the data you'll be able to provide them. The more accurate the data you're able to provide them, the more likely they'll see you as a risk or less, less risky option. And as a result, you're able to, or you're more likely able to provide a partnership. Um, I've got a few questions. Um, is it correct to understand then that your overall recommendation is for GT Nexus to grow their business more or less on the traditional customer base, but try to gain new customers, um, work with insurance company, you know, do this American truck? Because I think the question in the case is actually, you know, there's three directions. Do we continue to grow the traditional customer base, or do we use software offering to compete with ERP, or do we further leverage on cloud computing? So I think we've taken that question and we've developed it on a business basis. Um, what we have done is we've utilized cloud computing where it would be useful in the American trucks and GPS technologies. Um, so we do see potential for us to utilize that in the business model we, could, we use going forward. Um, but we also use, look at the traditional model as well. And then I think um, in terms of your proposals relating to working with insurers and also the American truck idea, it's, it's very creative, so good job team. Um, I do have a couple of questions on, on those two suggestions. Um, when you mean work with insurers, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the idea that you're providing data to these insurers. Um, is there any other partnership? Can you expand on that in a bit more detail? Um, because there was a suggestion that you're, would you be offering some sort of collaborative product with the insurers, or it's mainly you providing data to the insurers and trying to drive up market share because you're you know, basically trying to get their clients to be your clients and vice versa. What exactly are you trying to do? So I guess Kenneth mentioned um, we are looking to expand through them. We offer them a free service mm -hmm. um, and that sort of guarantees that basis. What you could look to going forward, as you mentioned, is collaborative products and the partners that you work with initially. So you could look to provide insurance alongside the system and really link that through. Um, we're initially targeting getting them to increase our percentage of shipments and perhaps that would be something we'd look to later. Yeah, and, to, and to flesh out the collaborative product offering idea that Nate's discussed, what we would have is we would utilize the cloud, the, the benefits of cloud, which is to have all information stored in one place. We have a standardized form between the insurance provider and ourselves so we can standardize the information. And in standardizing that information, we can provide instant insurance premiums and insurance quotes for people that use our platform. Mm -hmm. For example, if Joe wants to ship a box of toys over to America, he can now use our platform and on that platform he can instantly um, see which insurers provide which rates. And that's done through sh uh, sharing, sharing the information and using the cloud. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that point about you offering the service free to insurers. I mean, my question there immediately is, is that feasible? Because when you're sharing data, especially in today's age, you know, there's a huge emphasis on compliance, um, security, um, and you know, I think you need to think that through a little bit because you're assuming that um, you will grow your market by getting new clients to cover you know, whatever expenditures you need to invest to collaborate with these insurers. Um, furthermore, if you're developing collaborative, collaborative insurance products, then you're really moving to the space of insurance, and the cost of regulatory compliance there is 
know, it's very high as you know, which I'm sure is a hugely regulated product. So I would be mindful of that. Um, on that, sorry, just last question on the American truck part. Um, uh, I th that's a very innovative idea, but my immediate reaction there is that it's completely outside your core business area. Um, and you know, there, do you know the other players are already very active and doing that very well? And when you say American trucks, are you focusing that on within the United States or North America? So essentially what we saw is that it's important to start this entire strategy and stage process to make sure you understand what the risks are and mitigate from the beginning. Right. So what you're proposing you start is on the east side of um, America with those ports and begin with a company such as Maersk, who already is a trusted brand and knows what they're doing. So we're not going to send our own shipping trucks to different places. Rather, we're allowing Maersk to, to use, to I'd like to link our clients with Maersk so they can, we can offer a higher value proposition to them in order to mitigate the risks for us. Right. And, and to add to that, we want to look back at the purpose of us introducing the trucks all together. We're not proposing that you now become the leader in providing truck operations services, but rather that you use this as a way to expand your geographical footprint both nationally and internationally. From a national level, providing a truck service allows you to now show your customer how they Truck or how their product is getting from port to final retail, and in doing that, you're expanding the level of detail that your supply chain um, system provides. And on an international level, what we've realized is that trucks and also shipping providers are often interdependent. As a result, if you start working with more truck providers, you're also going to expose yourself to more shipping providers. That's the ultimate goal here because as you expose yourself to more shipping providers, you're able to expand your international. Just one final observation on the American truck proposal is I noticed on your timeline you said that you expand further um, and China and Europe were the, um, were the areas mentioned in 10 years time. Uh, in terms of geographic outreach, I just wonder whether you reconsider that to shift that more into uh, a shorter term sort of focus area because of you know um, Asia really driving international trade and also the setup of the Asian infrastructure bank and also the one by one road strategy that's been announced by China, which is really going to link up more you know, from Asia to Europe rather than North America. So we take your point about Asia to Europe. Um, I think where we started in the US was that Chinese uh, consumers were moving and exporting goods to the United States. So to go on the ship through the United States and then you'd have a truck network from there. Um, the second point you made about whether it would be 10 years or 5 years, so we're not timeline we implement is based on sort of achieving sort of principles and that sort of thing. So we'd look to target a percentage of the market first and it wouldn't be a rigorous sort of time, five to ten minutes on the basis. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, well done. Uh, in terms of your new uh, offering, you uh, suggested to uh, uh, produce a reporting, uh, reporting uh, offering. Uh, I, I, from what I read in the case, it seems that they already have some functionality that offers uh, reporting, so it probably wouldn't be a particularly new or innovative offering, as the uh, functionality is already built in, and it looks like it's a standard uh, part of the, uh, the uh, service that they, they, they offer. Um, what do you think? In response to that, we do agree that you currently have a report you offer, which is excellent. However, the report you offer right now is completely different to what we're proposing. So right now what you offer is you isolate your client's supply chain system. So they say, this is going to go from here to here to here to here, and this is the time system, and you report on that. What we propose is you take all of those essentially reports, you collect them to create an insight on demand in a specific product type, demand in a specific time of the year, demand in a specific geographic area, which is much more higher insight than just what time is your product going to reach there? And so the different, it's a different kind of report with much higher insight. Yeah, that's a good idea. In fact, perhaps some of these uh, solutions may not offer such uh, analytical capabilities at the moment. So uh, that's a good suggestion. Um, another idea, another thought is um, you consider to um, introduce a new uh, service offering, which is the insurance. But um, have you? examined the existing offering and, and found that there may be some uh, 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 gaps in terms of what the offering uses, uh, it, uh, it currently consists of as compared to your competitors. Now, if you look at some of your competitors, they have some functionality that 
uh, you don't possess. And if you and wouldn't you consider, would you consider uh, adopting that functionality rather than uh, considering introducing a yet another uh, service offering to the mix? I think the key with that, in terms of expanding your offering, in our idea blitz, which didn't quite make it into the presentation, but is on a backup slide. We did mention the possibility of merging with an accounting software, such as something um, like Xero, which can produce um, implications into the ERP kind of forum where other competitors have gone. I think what we focused on was this future vision that eventually it's going to end up, it's going to end up being a one-stop shop. So someone who manages the entire supply chain, including what the three key wants of a customer are, which is the physical flow of goods, the financial flow of goods and obviously the insurance flow of goods. We thought that it was best place now to jump on top and cover all three instead of trying to compete on little areas where we already operate pretty efficiently. Okay. One last question. I, I noticed uh, in the case that uh, War Warbus Pincus is, is looking at uh, um, um, IPOing your company. Um, and if that comes true, what would you do with the uh, what would you do with the, uh, the proceeds or the funds? Uh, have you considered that as a, a future fund, uh, future source of funds to uh, increase the expansion and growth of the company? So we see that um, as a potential advantage. You've got a source of funds from which to fund the sort of large expansions that we're talking about. So it would help grow in a bigger basis, sort of internationally. Um, and we think that what we're trying to do with growing the percentage of shipments made using our service and growing that sort of base of customers is really positive for an IPO going. And just to add to that, we actually identified the risk of an IPO, which is that possibly your competitors are going to look to IPO as well. And if you offer the exact same offering that they do, there'll be a lot of backwards and forwards in your share price. This is exactly what's happened in Australia and New Zealand, where two software as a service accounting providers, one MYOB and Zero, have gone neck and neck in terms of share price because they offer the exact same thing. And to tie that to your previous question, that's why we're not going in the exact same direction as our competitors, and we're instead providing one killer difference in this insurance market. And providing that killer difference, we'll win over the shareholders and we'll win the IPO battle if it comes to fruition. Um, Lexus has in the past um, uh, grow successfully via a number of acquisitions uh, for all that, uh, all the, uh, inorganic of growth. Um, I'm just wondering whether uh, when you formulating the strategy, have you taken that um, option into consideration uh, and what, what was your uh, conclusion and your thought process? So our thought process around that was we would consider acquisitions or mergers um, in things such as the accounting option. Um, with that, what we saw with the strategies we were targeting and insurance um, is that it is a market where individual shippers potentially have different insurers. So us acquiring an insurer potentially wouldn't have as much effect as partnering with multiple. Um, going forward from that, if you were to go geographically, then acquisitions would certainly be an option if it was on a basis that would work for our business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll throw out another one. Uh, you, you have, you, your um, suggestion for the trucking company was good. That's uh, another uh, link in the chain, an important link, especially as once the goods land, uh, they need to be transported and delivered, not only to the customer, uh, not only to the store, but to the end customer as well, which is really the last mile. Um, if you look at the case, they say that the sea freight, however, is expected to grow uh, which would also imply that, of course, uh, ground transport will also grow in Asia. So why, why did you choose U.S. side, say, versus um, the um, Asian side? And, and just to add one more point, that the trucking um, industry is extremely fragmented so um, uh, globally. So it's a good, a good market to get into, but you have huge hurdles due to the uh, extreme fragmentation of the, uh, the industry. The reason we chose America is essentially for the same reason you said there's large hurdles and there's large fragmentation. But in America we saw is that that fragmentation and hurdles was the, the, the lowest because the trucking culture in this America is both extremely strong and trustworthy. However, in the other countries we propose to expand to later, for example, China, it's much more risky. So it's much easier to just drop something off in China and so it's much more risky and difficult to implement domestic transport. So we thought the first stage of the Australia process 
to start where it's easiest and best to implement, which was America. And after that, you can expand throughout the rest of the world. And so, CanDop has essentially identified that the US is a more mature trucking market, whereas China is still a growing market. In the more mature market, you'll face less risk. And Patricia, if I could answer your earlier question about regulatory environment, if we move into China, we face significant regulatory risk because as we all know, it's very hard to do business there, especially as a foreign business. And if we start with trucking or our trucking um, plan over there, we may have an insurmountable hurdle to begin with. We've, in, we've purposely um, created the strategy to be scalable so that if it is successful in America, we can then move on to other places. Just like a comment there, I think um, in the US or North America, it could potentially be a more saturated market than so well developed, whereas if you're operating in say China or, or other parts of Asia, obviously the infrastructure is not so built out. So you, you do have a bigger um, potential um, you know, profit growing business, but obviously then you have to deal with all the other stuff, you know, the laws, the regulations, and I, even the logistics of it would be much more difficult. You don't have roads, how are you going to deliver them? So. Um, going back to the point of Asia being uh, the growth engine going forward, looking at um, our current uh, business model, it seems that our competitor is having a much stronger foothold in Asia than the Nexus is currently doing. And then we also understand that um, these acquisition, uh, these customers tend to be quite sticky to their uh, current service provider because the, the switching costs will be higher. So do you have any plans or suggestions as how we can um, increase our market share in Asia? Um, can How can we sort of steal some, some of the customers from our competitors? Uh, and, and move them to be our customers. Do you think your proposal on, on linking the insurance product is going to work? So essentially we talked about, talked about this in the case room, and the fact that it's very hard to differentiate your product enough to make someone to want to change to you. And so because of that reason, we saw that rather than trying to become the preferred option, we had to become the option they had to go through. And because of that, we developed the insurance strategy. So rather than becoming the preferred option, by targeting an insurance company who has a Chinese client, automatically you're able to get a client much easier than you would have to if you had to try and make yourself a better company. So that's essentially how we decided to target the Asian market much more efficiently. But I think my point is more about the Asian uh, container companies. They are currently more linked to uh, your direct competitor. So if I am a sort of a, a retailer wanting to send my shipment to to the US and then if I'm more inclined to use the Asian container, it was that Asian container company is actually using um, your competitor, uh, Cargo Smart, um, that makes my choice of your service uh, less um, um, sort of obvious, even if you have provided that insurance option. Sure, it seems like we're all jumping to take this question, so I'll take one part of it and then Brittany will carry on. So the key point we see here is this concept of protocol maps. So what we see is that people in China are naturally risk averse and it's part of their culture. And as a result, they're more likely to take up insurance and probably the insurance rates, um, or the uptake of insurance rates over there, or insurance generally, will be higher than other countries. That's one of the reasons we've focused on providing an insurance option to our, um, to our offering. And providing this insurance option to our offering, if and when we do go into China, we can instantly contact the insurers as a result, they'll be able to expose us to their database in the same way, or rather their customer base, in the same way that we're proposing currently. Because we're providing this extra insurance layer, which is the key layer that Chinese customers want, more and more of them will switch over to us. In doing so, as more of them switch over to us, perhaps once you reach 20 or 30% uptake rate, there'll be so many similar competitors uptaking that you'll reach a critical mass point where your uptake rate in China will um, exponentially increase. Just to add on to what Alex has already mentioned, I think the key it comes down to in the software as a service industry is being the master of everything. So as Alex said, one of our key introductions is this insurance, which a Chinese consumer identifies with. Beyond that, we've also made significant changes to the physical flow of goods in terms of the tracking of trucking um, at the other end. So a Chinese producer shipping their good may want or may see a lot of value in seeing that good travel across the states to make sure it reaches their final producer. Um, and as well as the finance arm, having the three comprehensive parts of supply chain management work together <coughs> is really going to act as an incentive to uh, make Chinese producers or consumers switch. Uh, 
Um, let's see, last question for me at least. Um, why did you not uh, consider a merger and acquisition strategy with your other two competitors? Uh, clearly, I think there's opportunity there. And so in order for to grow and consolidate your, your position within the industry, um, they have some complementary um, assets that you could have, uh, you could have acquired and uh, you could have therefore uh, grown um, through that way rather than trying to uh, create new customer demand. Yeah, so two things. One, cost and second, risk. With respect to cost, you are all currently using different databases. Because you're using different databases, it's not as simple as merging and then putting all of those three databases into one. You then have to either choose one of the three uh, merger, uh, merger partners databases or you have to use your own and it'll be very costly to transfer their information into a new format or your information into a new format. And that kind of flows into the second point here, which is risk. As we're moving into cloud computing, we're increasingly exposed to a database that we really don't know the potential of, and that we really don't know how um, it will pan out and how it will operate. If we merge at the same time and try to combine our information, it may be that in two or two years time, cloud computing has another innovation, and then we have to convert all of that information which we transferred into another platform which is an additional cost and additional risk. But in, in doing so you already required maybe 100,000 customers. I think one already had 100,000 customers. So although the technology would have changed, you would have had the, uh, the market uh, in your hands. You just would have not needed to modify your uh, IT solution to be able to serve their needs. In response to that, yeah. essentially if you merged with one of your competitors, there are some complementary aspects that could develop your overall business. We saw that, as we said in our, in our presentation, that those complements simply aren't enough to continue growing. So you may accept an extra 100,000, but from then on, there isn't enough of a complement to keep continue growing. And in order to keep growing, we believe it's much better to stay yourself and add on key things such as the American trucking system, the um, monthly report, and the insurance system so that you yourself can be more beneficial to your shareholders and grow exponentially over the next couple of years. And just to add on to what Kandal has said, I think the key to your success hasn't been merging or acquiring or even actively competing with your competitors. It's actually been what you do internally in terms of expanding your product offering and internal mergers like you did with the finance portion of your business. And that's really what's actually um, attracted more customers, you staying true to your core brand. Thank you very much.